Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Desk Studio. I am your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and today we are going to look at the label and the game condition of what you can expect from Trader. Now, if you're not familiar, Trader is one of the best, it's probably my favorite retro video game shops in Tokyo and Japan in general. Now, the thing about Trader is that it does not I don't want to say it specializes in video games because it's it's more of a general shop where it's got movies. Um, I think one of the places has like action figures and models. But I'd say of, of the shops in Tokyo, it can have some of the cheapest prices. But what's the condition of the games that you can expect to find there? Well, here is an example. This is um, a PC Engine Hue card game. Yes, it's a Hue card uh, for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, so I have not opened this up. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the condition that's listed on the label. Um, we'll talk about what's um, actually what's listed here. Um, and then um, I'll, I'll do a deep dive into like translating the label in a separate video that I'll post to this channel. Um, really what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on the like the physical manifestation of this game. Uh, so now, what do we need to look out for? So there's no disc since this is a Hue card game that we need to worry about. It's a regular edition, don't, and it's a, allegedly this has everything we could possibly ask for. And there is some damage to the manual. Now, what damage could that be? I do not know. Let's open this up. Let's see, how do we... Yeah, where do we get? Okay, oh yeah, something I should also mention is you can see here, this is listed as being 2,400 yen. Uh, at the time of filming, that would be something around uh, $22. Trader prices do not include tax. So you're gonna need to add on your final price for this uh, will be, so it'll be 2,400 yen uh, plus 240 because uh, Japanese sales tax is 10% nationally. So it'll end up costing you um, 2,640 yen or about like $24. Um, just also keep that in mind. Uh, let's open it up here. Now this is, because it's only saying there's a problem with the manual, that means that there should not be a problem with the jewel case, uh, which can often be a problem, especially when you're buying a CD game. Usually you'll find cracks and dents on it. Also trader labels are really good. I don't think there's a place in Japan that has a has an issue with with peeling off the label and leaving the adhesive behind. I've never run into that issue, although it, it maybe it exists somewhere. So let's take a look at the jewel case. I wonder if that comes off. Hmm. See, there's some there's some some scuffs here. You can see some things here. It's like, like okay, I'm, I'm being very nitpicky here. I want to say that, look, for, first of all, I bought it because it was, for one, cheap, and yeah, it looked like it was in good condition. I'm not a stickler for condition. I'm buying these games because I want to play them. If they are in good condition, that is an added bonus. But if I do point things out, I'm just pointing it out to say that when, when you go to Japan and you ex when you see a when you see something that is labeled like this, this is being offered... In, in in good condition, not necessarily perfect condition. Um, if this was at if this was at a place like say uh, Mandarake, uh, these these scuffs here would already put it probably in the B range. This is allegedly in in fine condition without any issues. But then when you actually get to the back here, like it's oftentimes you'll go to like say a hard off or somewhere else, you'll find that these labels for these uh, PC Engine games. Remember, these are getting these are going to be forty years old. Um, especially depending on when you're watching this video, uh, does this actually give a see 1990? So this is this is already 30 years old at this point when I'm filming this video. This is like the fact that it has survived this long, and oftentimes with PC Engine games, the glue for these this sticker and these like these um, these spine covers here. These labels here will often start going brown, just not only from the ink, but just from the glue. Like, look, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just what's going to happen as time marches forward. But to find something in, in this good of a condition is absolutely phenomenal. So I am actually, despite my nitpicks, I am actually very impressed by the condition of this. And look at this. This is, I love it when they have the MSRP on this. So this, when it came out in 1990, cost 7,200 yen. Even at the time, I want to say that would have been about $100 maybe. I can't remember what the exchange, <laughs> I don't have a, a historical exchange rate database on me. But just looking at the jewel case, yeah, I'm impressed. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. 
Let's open it up. Let's look at the manual and then we'll look at the we'll look at the game itself. So again, so something I'll point out is I don't know what it's like on the American jewel cases, uh, but especially for CDs and PC Engine CD games or, or PC Engine games, the cue cards. Watch out for the teeth when you're when you're taking out the manual. Does it have the inserts with it? Oh yeah, baby. All right, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, so let's look at the manual first. Looking at it, yeah, I can see why they said the manual's got some damage because it's got a crease here. Probably, I don't think someone was trying to dog gear it. Probably just uh, put it down the wrong way. Look at the beautiful colors on this. I love the old manuals. It's a bit thin, but oh yeah, given the, oh, giving you the bosses. Oh, that's so cool. I love these World War II era shooters. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And then we've got, this is the big one. This is not always included. This, I think, you know, I, I don't know what the actual rate is, but I want to say it's somewhere anywhere from 90 to 100% of Japanese games came with little postcards like this that you would send in. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is, you would send this in to any, <laughs> to any C. Um, you would, uh, yeah, you'd send it to Tokyo. And you would, it's just a sort of like survey I don't know actually what you got for for sending this in. Oh, okay, yeah, it'll say it'll say um I think it's you're being entered into like a lottery uh for for um some products um that they'll send you. Um so you if you sent this in, you could have won something, I, I believe. Uh, and then it just it's like this is really great. I love it when they include this. I hate it when it gets thrown out. Um, but it'll tell you, like, how, what do you think about the graphics, the sound, the controls, just overall. It'll ask you, like, um, like how did you find out about this game? Yeah, the, oh, my God. What? Yeah, what kind of PC Engine games do you like? What other games do you want? The ma What magazines are you reading? It's really a piece of history there, and I love it when these are included. Uh, but on, I, actually, something on the label... Um, that I noticed when I was reading this uh, to pr prep for this video is that different stores will will say a game is complete in different ways. So most stores, and actually it might be every store, I'm not sure, I don't know what different stores policy on this, but basically if a game is considered complete, if it has the jewel case, the original jewel case, the manual, and the, the cartridge itself or the CD. Now in the PC Engine, um, BC Engine's case, you need to also look out to make sure that it has this sleeve here. Now this sleeve, I believe a place like Trader and I believe most places will tell you if it's only the cartridge. They'll tell you if the sleeve is missing or not. I, most of the time. But not every store will do that, but the bigger ones will. And also, I do not believe that stores consider having this, um, this card, this postcard, with the game as complete. So they will sell you a complete game and say it is complete without having the postcard in it. Also keep that in mind. And maybe some people will pay money for this. I just, I like to have it, but I don't need to have it. Now let's look at the game itself. The game is also being sold in fine condition. This this can brown um, pretty easily. This actually looks in great shape. I wonder where this was stored for all that time. And looking at this, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. There's like no scratches, no nothing. It's like, you know, it's a, I, I, I'm sort of ashamed to say it, but it's almost like no one even like played this. Like someone just bought it and then maybe played it a couple times and then just put it away, which is a real shame. Uh, but it looks cool. And actually, yeah, I forget that they actually put this in English. Well, I think because um, since the PC Engine was somewhat successful in Europe, um... And I think it was just the PC Engine itself that I, I'm guessing they also printed this in English. You can see some smudges, but that might actually be my fingers. It's my oily fingers. <laughs> see, that's, a that's you know, with a lot of these Japanese games, especially when you're buying them in perfect condition, you're actually ruining them by opening them. Like, they were fine until you decided to get, you decided to buy it and actually use it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put in the uh, the card. So for, to sort of wrap it up here, Trader is an absolutely great place to buy Japanese retro games. I highly recommend it. If you are in the Tokyo area, give it a, look it up. 
you'll it's like it's on it's like five minutes from everywhere else in Akihabara. You're gonna want to go there to sort of set your price floor. Um, there in Sudugaya, I think are going to offer some of the cheapest games in Akihabara, uh, particularly when you compare it to Super Potato and Mandarake. This is not always going to be the case, as I will say with Super Potato, where it has probably the most expensive prices in Tokyo. That is not always the case. Sometimes Trader will be more expensive. It just depends on the game. Sometimes it can even depend on the on the time of day. I will say that Trader tends to have more specials and sales going on than the other stores. So, um, you know, if you can Google Translate the website, you might find out more information about that. Overall, I'd say the condition of games at Trader tends to be um, slightly uh, about average. Sometimes they'll have beat up games there. Like there was a copy of Aria of Sorrow for the Game Boy Advance that I wanted to buy. And it was in really, really beat up shape, but they discounted it accordingly. So if you wanna save some money, you can buy beat up games and you can save anywhere from 20 to 30% on the price. Now, that's not the case with this one because even though the manual had has that little um, that little crease in it, everything else was perfectly fine. I can't wait to put this in and actually uh, and actually give it a shot. So, with that, this has been investigating the condition of a game bought from Trader. I have been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, saying thanks for watching. See you next time and mahalo.